Hi, my name is Jim Arabito, and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist layman. As a Seventh-day Adventist, I'm very, very interested in the fulfillment of prophecies in these last days. Especially am I aware of the place of Roman Catholicism in closing events. Well, I was on a street ministry in Berkeley about ten years ago. I became acquainted with a Roman Catholic Jesuit priest from the University of San Francisco. I asked him in one of our conversations, have you read the Great Controversy? And he explained to me that the Great Controversy has a lot of truth in it. In fact, he told me that the Roman Catholic Church will rule the world again. For a while, I was in a state of shock. You know, it just happens to be that although we're Seventh-day Adventists, many times we don't see in reality the very things that we supposedly believe. It hit me very hard, and I began about ten years ago collecting books on Roman Catholicism and world politics. You know, we as Adventists expect somehow to see all these events take place out in the open. But you know, I found that that is not what Revelation 17 tells us. Revelation 17, verse 3, says this, So he carried me away in the Spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Well, a scarlet-colored beast is all the political powers that are going to pull together to destroy the commandments of God. The woman riding on that beast is Roman Catholicism and fundamental Christianity. John describes these things as taking place in the wilderness. Now, in reading Revelation chapter 12, we know that when the primitive church fled persecution, she went into the wilderness. And in Great Controversy, page 55, Ellen White tells us that the wilderness is a symbol that represents obscurity and seclusion. This means that at the end of time, Roman Catholicism is working in secret with the rulers of this world in an effort to control the world, to take it over. And I believe that time is right upon us. You know, I plan to put together a documentary film called The Missing Dimensions in World Affairs. And for that film, I had gathered together interviews with people who had had either personal experiences with infiltration of Jesuits or Catholic priests, or, in one instance, an interview with an ex-Jesuit priest by the name of Alberto Rivera, and another, a secret agent uh, for the federal government working for the Pentagon during the Second World War, and his wife was a chief stenographer of the Pentagon. All the funds that went over to Europe for the troops pass first through the Vatican. This man had had personal um, working relationships with Roman Catholic priests and listened to him. He knows what he's talking about. I had to stop my plans to do this documentary and decide to just get these things before you right now. The Jesuit priests have been infiltrating every institution and they're ready now for a takeover. I want you to Pay close attention to this first uh, person that we're going to interview. He's an ex-Jesuit priest, and he tells you about the, um, the, the infiltration by the Jesuits. A specialized work um, in dealing with the infiltration of churches and religious institutions as well as government. Uh, that, that cover a tremendous uh, number of institutions. And the purpose of that infiltration was what for? Well, the purpose is what the Roman Catholic system has all the time as, as her own purpose, is to infiltrate, to penetrate all the areas of life where the Ro Roman Catholic can have control and access for the coming world government. What that means is, in preparation for that world government, the Roman Catholic institution, especially since the establishment of the Jesuit order in 1541, throughout all these 500 years, they've been in preparation, in 
and, and through infiltration and penetration of every uh, level uh, of society in order to uh, take over uh, the world uh, politically and religiously. There are two doctrines that define very well these, uh, these dangerous goals of the Roman Catholic institution. Two doctrines uh, define this very well. One is called the doctrine of the apostolic succession, and that is dealing with the papacy. And the other is the doctrine of the temporal power, and that is dealing with world government. Of course, both, because you can see that even the Pope and his own individual office, he meet those requirements. Uh, he is not only the head of his church, as he called himself, John Paul II, the present Pope, he said he is the pastor of his church. He is not only that, uh, but he is the head of his state, of his, of his country. But that means he is the head of a political state. Both combinations are in one office there. In, in prophetically speaking, that is what we see in the book of Revelation. Uh, uh, the political power always hand-to-hand -hand with the religious power. 